Hello, everybody. A warm welcome to A Kick in the Balearics, uh, where myself, Richie Pryor, and um, Martin Makepeace from Ibiza, uh, we start talking about um, Balearic football. It's our Balearic football podcast. We talk about uh, La Liga, uh, La Liga 2, sorry, not La Liga. I, I, um, there's me thinking that Morabi is still in La Liga. Yeah. Uh, La Liga always two. next year, Richie. Always next year. That's always next year, exactly. Promotion. Uh, we talk about Segunda, uh, Segunda B, where most of our teams are, are playing next year. And uh, we talk about Tercera and local football as well. So, Mark, how are you? You be all right? Yeah, very well, Rich. Uh, episode three, we're cracking on, aren't we? So, uh, cracking on, mate. Uh, cracking on. I know you're concerned that we're not getting that many followers, but I've told you, consistency is key, mate. Content is king. Exactly. And you, I noticed you've still got that very nice photo in the background and I'm still struggling. But there you go. That's, that's where the budget is, mate. And that's what, what we'll have to go with. So, Well, as, as um, usual, beef has got a lot more money than, than Mallorca. But, you know, um, that's just the name of the game. That's it, mate. That's it. So, listen, we, uh, we finished last week. Cause the last thing you said to me last week was, um, i got a feeling something quickly is going to happen at Real Mallorca. Those were your last words. And um, it came to fruition. Uh, yeah, it did. It did, Richard. Actually, it came a little bit earlier than I thought. But, you know, these, the way the big... I didn't know anything. I didn't know info, info, inside information. It's just I got a, a gut feeling that, you know, they weren't going to mess about. And uh, they, they've obviously... Um, Real Mallorca, that is. They've obviously announced their um, new manager. And uh, I thought you wrote a very interesting blog this morning with a, with a very catchy uh, clickbait headline, Richie, which was underwhelming. So... Uh, I mean, can yeah. you tell me a little bit more why you're so disappointed in this? Uh, or not disappointed, but why you're so underwhelmed with this appointment? Well, if we just go back and to sort of talk about where we were, uh, where we were sort of surmising what might happen last week. We talked about, I talked about Pep Luis Marti, former uh, player of Mallorca, former captain, who eventually ended up going to um, Leganes, uh, another team that was relegated from, uh, from the uh, La Liga last season. Then we were talking about... Um, Adoni Ariola, the former Atletico Bilbao player, who took Mirandes to 11th place in La Liga 2 last year. My only concern with him was that he hadn't really had much experience uh, and would he be able to cut it, you know, um, trying to get Mallorca back. And then all of a sudden, on I, th- I got a notification on Thursday afternoon uh, that uh, there'd be a press conference tomorrow, uh, on Friday that was, uh, at the stadium to uh, reveal the new manager who was going to be Luis Garcia Plaza. Okay. And... Um, I, you know, probably like most people out there, didn't really know too much about him. So obviously I then uh, did a bit of digging to find out a little bit more about him. And listen, whilst he's got experience in uh, La Liga and La Liga 2, uh, the experience he has is, is, is a long time ago. It's, you know, it's about 10, 10 years ago, more or less. Um, and when I look at his win record, I think to myself... Uh, this doesn't. This doesn't look right to me. This doesn't. You know. I mean, Richie. The, only... Richie, I, the thing. The thing is. Let, sorry. Let me cut in, Richie, because can remember what we said last week. The last thing we said is, I said, I'm not saying it. I told you so, but I said, uh, I think something's going to happen soon, and it's going to be a big appointment because they need a big manager to bounce back. Are you saying that he's not the man? So, well, look, look, if I'm if I'm checking his record. The last time he managed properly, as I say, properly in La Liga, uh, and this was in La Liga, the top division, uh, was Levante. He, he, when I say properly, I mean that you know he won 51 of his 128 games. He got the club promoted in his second season. He left after the first season, uh, sorry, his third season, finished 14th in La Liga. Then he went on to Hetafe in 2011, um, and he was there for three years as well. Won 34 of his 113 games, finished 11th in La Liga in his first season, 10th in his second season. And he was fired uh, in March 2014, where the team weren't actually having a, a good time of it. So since 2014, he hasn't really been involved in La Liga until he came back in December 2018 to go to Villarreal. And he, he signed in December 2018. And seven weeks later, he was sacked at the end of yeah, January but, but, 2019. Yeah, but don't forget, that was, at, that was at a time when Villarreal were, were all over the place, mate. And they were, they were hiring and firing all the time. So... Can I just, well, he won, hang on a minute, but he won one game in nine. Okay, for, yeah, fair enough. Listen, you, you, you are, it's, it's a, it, you know, it's a results-driven business. But what I'm saying, but you're, you're a little bit off the mark here. I, listen, I get what you're saying. I'm a bit underwhelmed as well. I looked at his record. It's like, bleh. you know, it's like, a, you know, it's a nothing, it's a kind of a nothing um, appointment, isn't it, mate? Yeah. I, what I'd like to know is where they got him from. 
yeah, and what other options they had, you know, because... You know, well, no other options apart from the two that we've already mentioned. And as I say, the Pep Luis Marti really didn't come from anybody but me, I'll be perfectly honest. Yeah, but you want, I, I, think you're, I think you're being a little bit uh, uh, sulky here, mate, because you wanted, you wanted him, didn't you? Sulky. <laughs> I'm 53, you know, you I don't get him. sulky. <laughs> yes, you do, mate. And you're a lot older than that, Richie, we know that. However, <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, I know you wanted Marti, but... Uh, you know, were you, were you so disappointed? Were you looking for someone a bit more higher profile? Listen, if well, well, a higher profile, you know, I'm a Yorker going to get higher profile. I, I don't really know, to be perfectly honest. And let's be honest here. Look, if I was given the option of uh, between uh, the the fella from, uh, who are we talk about, Adoni from uh, from Bilbao or this guy, I would have probably picked the younger guy. Because at least the younger guy is going to have a bit of, you know, stuff behind him. He's, you know, he's 38. It's a, it's a big challenge for him. You know, he, he's got an opportunity. This guy, uh, oh, look, I hold, I hold my hands up and say, I hope I'm totally wrong and he gets us promoted yeah. and I'll eat my words. But, um, but you're a fan, Richie, you're a fan though, aren't you? Listen, first and, firm, first and foremost, you're a Real Mallorca fan. So your voice must be heard because I'm sure it's been echoed in the bars of, of, uh, of Palmer and Magaluf and Calvia. However, let me just say that I'm pretty underwhelmed as well. I read your blog this morning. Very interesting take on it as well. You know, obviously you're looking for clicks, but I get that, Rich. You know, we all looking for clicks. Aren't we? I wasn't looking for clicks at all. <laughs> <laughs> if I was looking, listen, if I was looking for clicks, I'd have asked for more information from you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, but can I just listen? I, I think it's a really bland appointment. But bland, aren't they all? The right word. That's bland. the word, bland. Well, you know, there's there's a good word in Spanish. It's called soso. Yeah, it's a, it is a so-so appointment, right? It, it doesn't tick any boxes. I'm with you on it, mate. All I'm saying is, let's give the guy a chance. And are you going to interview him, Richie? Have you got an interview yet? Hopefully, yes. Um, I, we have uh, we spoke to the club, and the club have said that um, his English is pretty good, as far as I'm aware, and yeah. um, he will do an interview. So uh, that could hopefully happen in, uh, before next week's podcast, if, if that comes off. That would be, no, uh, I think that'd be fantastic. No, that would be really interesting, because I think you just have to ask him those, those pointed questions and say, you know, what, what's your, what is your illusion for the club? Because, you know, is it, is it his way back into the big time? Is he going to look to make a quick hit and then, then use it as a springboard? Or is he, is he genuinely, you know, think this is a, a three or four year project? Because as we said before, you know, the guy you've just, you, you, you've just lost, you know, he was there for three years. He took you up. So he took you down and took you up again. Yeah. Uh, and he was almost part of the, the family. And yeah, I can't blame him going to a bigger club, mate. We can't blame him for that. You know, uh, well, you, you say that funny enough, and, and one thing I mentioned in my blog today was um, they went through four managers last year, Espanol. Yeah, in no, one well, season. Think, yeah, I mean, and, and look, and, and look what they did at the end of the season when they went down. They're asking for it to them to be reestablished. So they're a club, obviously, all over the place, aren't they? You know, you, yeah. you can you yeah. can see that. And let's hope he does the same for you. And don't forget, Real New Yorker, you guys were all over the place before he came in as well. Yeah, so he stayed in the yeah, ship. Yeah. So I think they've looked at him and gone, hold on. Who we got? Who's got a proven track record to get us get us out of Segunda? Yeah, because we're in Segunda, and he ticks the boxes. So listen, he's gone. Let's focus on the new manager. He's a bland manager, in my opinion, and I, and I know yours as well. But I think we'll get behind him, and uh, obviously, it'd be going to be very interesting for us to uh, follow him week in, week out, because I'm expecting fireworks, and that's just from you. <laughs> let's see mate let's see let's see i just say also that um, there's uh, there's about six thousand people have um sort of uh, what do you call it um renewed their, their season tickets renovated um, so renovated uh, yeah renovar as they say in spanish renovar, um, yeah, in so, spanish, so that's that's that, that's not bad so um we've got to well listen at the moment we don't know when we've got till till we're actually allowed back in um the club are saying you pay 25 percent of the overall ticket price right now and then um, anything uh, from then on in will be uh, weighted until it goes to uh, they allow start uh, allow start uh, sorry uh, attendances or people back into the ground. So let's see. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, football without spectators is different, isn't it? We, we mentioned it on the radio, I think, yesterday, didn't we? You know, watching mm. Man United and whatever. But you know, I think the sooner we get back into those stadiums, maybe the better. For, for yeah, and an actual fact, I think you mentioned this as well yesterday. You've actually started to get used to uh, yeah. no crowds actually right now. Yeah. You know, you've, you're not now concentrating more on the football than you were on the sort of the atmosphere and the crowds and everything. Well, else. you know, some Richie, that's not a bad thing, though, is it? You know, I mean, I don't know about you, but the first time I watched those matches without a crowd, 
I kind of, I was sidetracked. Yeah, I, I, I kind of, I was, uh, my focus wasn't on the football. Now it's on the football. So, yeah. you know, and, and I think the interesting thing through all this is that the quality players are still quality players, aren't they? Yeah, 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 definitely. With or definitely. without a crowd. And, and I think that's the, that's the scenario here. So, you know, fingers crossed we can get back in the stadium, but we just have to go with it anyway, don't we? So let's move down to uh, Segunda B now. And um, you've got some interesting stuff on Peña Deportiva, Mark, haven't you? Yeah, I have, Richie. I mean, we, we tend on this show to, to, to spend a lot of time on Real Mallorca, and rightly so, by the way, because they're the big guys. Um, we also spend a lot of time on UD Ibiza. But, you know, we, we tend to kind of forget about Peña Deportiva. They're from the east coast of Ibiza, Santa Eulalia. Uh, they have the lowest budget in Segunda B out of everybody. Uh, and they, they really overperformed last year by getting to the playoffs. They were knocked out uh, in the second round of the playoffs. Uh, I mean, it was, a, it was a glorious failure, Richie, really. You know, if there's any such thing as a glorious failure. But you know, yeah, they, came back, they came back heroes, whereas uh, Udi and um, Atletico Balear came back really as, as chumps, really. So, Peña, but I, I've got a feeling it's going to be a very hard season, Richie. Well, manager's gone. Uh, yeah. We all thought the manager was going to have to take a Baleares, but that didn't happen. Well, as we discussed last week, he had a contract, but they, they didn't, they didn't honour that as well. So, yeah, manager's gone. Uh, and their two big players have gone this week as well. So, Pepe Bernal, who was their real motor force, you know, he was, he, he's from the island anyway. He's, he's Ibi Fenko. He, he's gone around the houses. He's, he's played for a lot of Segunda B teams. He's gone. And it was a real surprise to me, Richard, that Pepe Bernal, because I thought, what they would do is build the side around Pepe Bernal because he's their man. He's their number two. He wears the number 10 shirt. You know, listen, we all know what the number 10 shirt means in football. He wears the number 10 shirt. They, they kind of, I thought the new manager will come in, who we don't know who the new manager is, by the way, but he'll come in and he will build the team around Pepe Bernal. But he's uh, signed for San Fernando in Andalusia, which he's the first one out the door. And you know when your top player is the first one out the door, Richie, you have to be concerned, yeah? Also, uh, we've got Roger igor has gone out as well. Yeah, he was the other guy who was a real standout player. He signed for Rayo Maja de Honda, yeah? So, when your two best players and your manager leaves, I've just got a horrible feeling that the wheels... I'm, I hope I'm wrong, by the way, Richie, but I've got a horrible feeling the wheels may come off this season. Yeah, I mean, Peña finished, what, fourth in the league last year, didn't they? Yeah, they got a bit lucky. You know, with with they got a bit lucky with the lock with the uh, lockdown and the the suspension. I think they were they were falling away. Uh, I think if the season would have gone on, they may have struggled to get to the to the to the playoffs. But you've got to take you've got to take your your chances, haven't you, mate? Is it, you know, it, it's a bit like Denmark winning the Euro '92, isn't it? You know, they weren't even supposed to be there. So Peña got a bit lucky. They got to the playoffs. Uh, they won the first match when nobody expected them to win it, and they lost the second match in the ninth. In the 94th minute, I think, or the 114th minute with nine men. I mean, this was an Alamo. It was an Alamo loss, this was, mate. You know, they were they were really nine men up against it, you know, and they, they but, you know, uh, I've got a, I've got a, I hope I'm wrong, as I said, but I've got a horrible feeling that uh, if I was a betting man, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see what the odds they're getting for relegation this year. But let, I think, above all, joking aside, a, a good year for Penny this year will be staying in Segunda B. Um, a bit quiet on the UD Ibiza front, a few players out, but um, it's about it, really, isn't it? Well, well, actually, Richie, it's not quiet at all with UD Ibiza because they're getting rid of a lot of players. There's a mass clear out going on now. It yeah, had to happen. It had to happen, by the way, because they signed so many players last year. I mean, they really did throw the kitchen sink at playoffs and, and promotion last year. And I think that's the disappointing thing why UD didn't actually um, uh, get to the to the finals at least of the playoffs. Um, but they've got rid of Ranv. Rai, who was a really good player, I think he's probably going to go back to Real Zaragoza. A little Brazilian guy, he's only about four foot five. You know, one of those Maradona-esque players. Uh, he was, he's gone back to Zaragoza. Caballi's left, Quintanilla's left, Mendoza's left, Cornud's left, and Borca's left. That's just this week, by the way, and I expect a lot more departures in, in the coming days. But the good thing is, obviously, I think they're going to sign some new players. And again, I've got the feeling that UD are going to throw money at this problem, by the way. So, Sibo uh, uh, is, is actually um, Renovado. He's, he's, he's got a new contract, I presume, for a year. 
interesting about Sibo because he is from Watford. Yeah, he's from Watford. He's on loan from Watford. Big lad up front. You know, I think he's a Ghanaian. Is he Ghanaian international? I think he's a, he's a big lad up front. He's a real plan B. He's a bit, how can you see? Just in, not just in fact, John Fashion. Remember John Fashion back in the day? Yeah, he'd come on, he'd elbow everybody. Big lad, Seba. I'm really glad to see him uh, on another contract. And 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 Chanza has, has uh, signed again. So, um, although it's quiet on the actual uh, news of, of, of anything coming out of the club, there's there's a lot of pe- people leaving. And I'm like, I'm expecting a couple of big signings, Richie. I've got to tell you, before the start of the season, I really think President Amadeo Salvo is going to throw the kitchen sink, he's going to throw the washing machine. And he's going to throw the big American refrigerator at this this year. Interesting. Now, I, I did notice also that I hadn't seen this before, that um, a club called San Rafael uh, have sort of been renamed San Rafael de Udi Ibiza. So I take it these are like a feeder club, are they? Is that what's going on there? Are you talking about Simeone, by any chance? Uh, <laughs> I just, no, San Rafael de Udi yeah, yeah. Right, no, 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 I'm, 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 listen. Like, what's Simeone with this? Okay, right. So I thought you were going to tell me about Simeone, right? So um, San Rafael is in Tefera, okay? So, uh, yeah. and they've, they've signed a deal with Udi. I think, the, I think Udi are, are paying money to San Rafael. I, I don't, don't take that as a way, but I presume there's some form of financial uh, settlement there. And uh, basically, yeah. San Rafael, they've appointed a new manager this week as well. They're a feeder club. You know, we mentioned last week about your feeder club over there, uh, your your son's mm. feeder club to Real Mallorca, isn't it? Yeah, last year. What is it? San yeah. Francisco, isn't it, I believe? San Francisco, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, um, San Rafael are now the, the official feeder club to, um, to Udi Ibiza. Um, also, I, I thought you might be talking about Gianluca Simeone, who's obviously Diego Simeone's son. Okay, right, and his brother uh, plays for Cagliari, I think, in the Serie A. But Gianluca Simeone is signed for San Rafael. No, sorry, he's he's left San Rafael. He was at San Rafael. He's left them, and now he's signed for CD Ibiza, which is another feeder club for Udi Ibiza. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, what's happening? Let, let, let's just put layman's terms. At the top of the tree, we've got Udi, and feeding down, we've got CD Ibiza, and we've got San Rafael. They're both in the um, Tith areas and they're using them as a feeder club. Okay, I'm with you now. With you now. I just wanted to touch on quickly um, Atletico Baleares because a uh, nice story came out of Baleares this week. Juan Carlos Sanchez Martinez uh, is uh, a player that's cheaper, uh, just signed uh, for Atletico Baleares this week. Uh, he was born in Calvia, the village of Calvia. Uh, obviously, I live in the municipal. Santa Ponce is part of the municipality of Calvi, but there is a village called Calvi. It's where my boys started their football careers as well. Um, and I met him a couple of times because he used to come back every season um, to present all the trophies for the kids. At, um, so, you know, he's, he's well thought of. He went off to join the, uh, the very famous Villarreal Football Academy at a young age. That you, Obviously, I know your son has been, my son's been there as well. Yeah. Um, and um, he played, I think it was about 224 games for Villarreal and Villarreal B. And in fact, the year that they were promoted uh, back to uh, La Liga in 2012-13, we, we as a, or my son's uh, team, got invited to the game. We played a, a friendly match at Villarreal to begin with in the daytime. And then early evening, we were invited to go to Villarreal, watch them play Almeria. And they beat Almeria by a heating goal. And uh, they were promoted to La Liga. So it's a really nice little story. His mum and dad still live in the village of Calvia. Um, and uh, you know, sort of looks. He's thirty three now, so you know, he's looking obviously looking to come home, so, which is basically so he, what he said. Is he, know, signed, he so is he signed? Is he signed? Is he signed, Richie, for Atletico Baleares? Yeah, he's signed. It's done. Wow. Yeah, it's done. Yeah, yeah, good. It's done. No, he's no, signed it's, for Atletico Baleares. So it's a night. You know, it's a night. It's always good when the when the kind of prodigal son returns, isn't it, mate? And and especially someone of. of and let's face it, I think Atletico Baleares are missing that little bit of of. Of di- you know, that dynamite. Is he a mid- I presume he's a holding midfield player, is he? No, he's a goalkeeper. All oh, right, okay, he's a keeper. Oh, even better. Okay, he's right. A keeper, so, yeah. All right, okay. So your lads, your <laughs> so one of your lads would be happy, right? Okay, so so yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. always 
it's always good when when the prodigal son returns and it gives the it gives the club a, a quick fillet. Talking about uh, uh, Calvia, obviously that's where Asensio comes from as well. So they've obviously got a they've got a good uh, good a good heritage that club, haven't they? Well, it's slightly different. So that were players to Calvia was where Asensio came from, and there's CD Calvia, yeah, uh, right, which okay. is in the village. So they they are different teams, but. You know the islands do produce players. We know, you know that. You know that, well, that, that boy was they, a good goalkeeper. He went off and did, did, you know had a good career. Um, and the islands do produce good footballers. It's, there's no doubt about it. Absolutely, no good. Good side. I, I think I, I really, I, I've got. I like Atletico Bali. I've got to say, I know I'm a UD fan, but I, I like that club because it, it's a passionate club, isn't it? So what I've seen of it so far. You know, we went to see the match last year. You know, I'm going to keep a good eye on Atletico Balea this year and, and let's hope that, you know, with, some, with a signing like that, gives the club a real fillet, which I think it will do. So, as you know, this uh, podcast also uh, would like to concern local football, youth football, uh, all the way from Puri Benjamin all the way up to uh, Juvenil. Uh, we're really interested in any stories that you uh, guys out there listening to this uh, can come up with about your clubs, um, you know, if you want us to concentrate on a particular club or a particular player or your club's looking for players, obviously players, you know, are starting to go back now. There's a few teams that have started back up. Uh, my son uh, was supposed to start last Monday, didn't, and they're starting this coming Monday. Uh, he's training four nights a week. My youngest son, the goalkeeper, has started uh, his goalkeeper training, but he is going back on the 7th of September. Um, no word as yet as when the actual sort of games or anything are going to start. I mean, obviously, I think they're they're waiting for all the playoffs to, to get out of the way. Um, and then they'll start building up all the leagues. But um, your your boy's started training in Martin, hasn't he? Yeah, so he's, he's training, but he's only training once or twice a week, Richie, at the moment. And it's behind closed doors. No parents are allowed. You know, we, we, we touched on it last week. You know, for me, it's really important that he get back because, you know, I don't know about your kids, but my kids haven't been the most active during lockdown, by the way. So, you know... Um, <laughs> And I think they, they get into bad habits, don't they, kids do? So it's a really positive thing that they're back training as well. I was talking to him today about it, and uh, we still don't know when he's starting. He's a goalkeeper, so uh, you know he, he's having some extra uh, training because he needs to get his sharpness back as well. But you know um, we're looking forward to getting back on it, Richie, really. I mean, it's really important for, for, the, for the Balearic family, for, football family, that we get back because, you know, as we, as we keep saying, Balearic football family is the fabric of, 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 of sporting in the Balearics, isn't it? You know, it's, it's what the parents do uh, week in, week out. You, you know, you're taxing your lads all over the place. I'm, I'm following my lad all over the place as well. So you know, let's get them back, but also let's make sure that everyone's safe as well. That's the most important thing. So yeah, you know, yeah I agree with safe. that. And, and yeah. I just, it can't happen soon enough, but we are still in August, Rich, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's what we forget, actually, don't we? We, we? we forget that normally the season probably won't start till probably the end of September, I'd have thought. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, because it's so quiet out there for, for you know, for, for, for obviously different reasons, we're kind of looking for, for football, but it's only, the, is it the 12th of August today? I mean, I've lost, yeah. you know, we're, still, we're still six weeks away from the start. So, uh, you know, SD Port Manny is Danny's side, my, my son. Um, great, a great club, and, and you know they're working really hard with the community to bring the kids back together in a safe environment. And uh, you know it's 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 a pleasure to be involved with that club as well. And I'm going to be following San San Francisco this year, my my uh, Mallorca club, because I've got my two boys Jake and Jude are playing for them as well. So uh, we'll be uh, we'll be following them mates as well. Won't we? Yeah, just a reminder to um, keep an eye on all the social media. Obviously, follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, on uh, Instagram. We've got the YouTube channel. You know, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. The podcast will be out uh, normally every Wednesday. That's the, the day we normally bring it out. And then a, um, a podcast will come out on a Thursday normally. So, um, yeah, all good. You know, I'll tell you what's really exciting, Rich. I mean, you know, we, 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 we're going to be doing this every week. But every week, I think there's not going to be nothing to talk about. And there's so much to talk about every week, isn't there? You know, it, it's well, Spanish I mean, when we football. get into action to the season, Mark, we're not, we're not, I don't really have enough time to <laughs> no. Hey, we're gonna have to <laughs> cut it down, mate. No, I was thinking this week what me and Rich are gonna talk about, then all, this, all of a sudden, you know, people start leaving Real and New York and sign a new manager. We've got all these players as well, so I'm really excited about it, mate. And uh, it's always a pleasure to, to share the Blair football love with the people out there. Good. Uh, take care, everybody. Have a good week. Um, we're back next week. Myself and Martin, don't forget to listen to us on a Tuesday. Well, I listen to me every day, of course, you know, apart from weekend. Uh, but Martin's with me on a Tuesday. Uh, we talked a little bit about Ibiza. 
And, uh, of course, we have a little footy chat as well. So, Mark, take care. I'll speak to you next week. Always a pleasure, Richie. I'll speak to you next week. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate. Take care.